Tricentral RAC British Saloon Championship, 1981. The year of quality and quantity. More Ford Capris than ever before, and more Rovers. And the reigning champion, Tom Walkinshaw with a Mazda, anxious for outright victory. We're going to look at the first six races in this crowded programme. And we're going to watch Gordon Spice, who won, of course, the 3.5-litre class last year, to see just how well he can go this year against the might of four Rovers. This is the debut of the Gordon Spice Racing Team, but away from the line is Andy Rouse, and alongside him, the Mazda there, holding on for all his work, as Wynn Percy tries to get the lead and succeeds as they come down through the devil's elbow at the end of lap one. Gordon Spice is some way back. He's had problems with the traffic, but now the positions are reversed at the head of the field and Andy Rouse is in front of the Mazda. Stu Graham, in the second of the Gordon Spice racing cars, has a problem and goes into the pits. But here come the leaders once more, and indeed we can see that gap is just as close as ever it was. Eighth place now for Gordon Spice, and still making up ground in front there of Brian Muir's Rover. And Spice now really having to work hard to make his way up through this very competitive field. The Capris are here more and more than ever we've seen before, and they're all competitive. Through now the S's over the curb goes second man Walkinshaw. The Rovers have had problems in practice, but the problems are not stopping them going quickly, as up now to sixth place, with smoke coming out the back there, Gordon Spice really throwing the big red Capri around. Through goes Andy Rouse once more, on his winning way. His Capri going well too, but all eyes now are on Gordon Spice. He's going faster and faster in his battle to get up through the field. He's up to fifth place now, and closing fast, in spite of the smoke coming from the tyres. In the lead, still Andy Rouse, and extending it all the time. There's the Mazda in second place, and there's nothing that Wynn Percy can do about it. A back marker comes through as we wait for Vince Woodman. Here comes Woodman now in third place, and here's Gordon Spice in fourth place. Nick Whiting's Capri has also been competitive, but the Rovers haven't had a good day. Out goes the chequered flag, and Andy Rouse wins the first round of the Tricentral British Saloon Car Championship. He looks pleased because it's not going to be as easy as that next round. For that, we go to Silverstone, the home of British motor racing and the home this year of the Marlborough British Grand Prix. The conditions are very odd indeed. It's beginning to rain and no one's quite sure what tyres to wear. You can tell that by the front row. Intermediates on Wynn Percy's car, dries on Gordon Spice's car and wets on Andy Rouse's car. The Rovers too are puzzled because this is usually a good race for them. Dennis Leach doesn't know quite what tyre to wear. Perhaps he's going to try one of each. It would be just like Dennis if he did. The marshals don't think it's funny, however, and one of them takes his spare wheel away. Confusion reigns, then, with the weather conditions adding to the chaos. Seconds to go before the start. A little bit of creeping there from the outside man. But it looks as if it's going to be clean when Percy creeps a bit and Gordon Spice all but stands still on dry tyres and is engulfed by the field as they go off then towards Cops Corner for the first time. It's Wynn Percy in the lead as they come through the chicane. Second place, Bristolian Vince Woodman. He always excels in the wet. And Gordon Spice struggling with a car that's oh so slippery and oh so sideways there. Down in fourth place at the moment and about to be engulfed by Jonathan Bunker. Stowe Corner and the Mazda still in the lead. The wipers flapping, wiping away this horrible soaking rain that looks as if it's going to make this track as slippery as it's ever been. Stuart Graham has a real handful there as he goes through and gets very sideways, but Spice on the dry tyres, trying to find a little bit of dry track. Once again, Win Percy with the Mazda, still holding off Vince Woodman, but now with the threatening form of Andy Rouse closing. Gordon Spice coping manfully with the conditions on dry tyres. Other drivers, however, are having problems, are coming together between Chris Hodgetts and the second of the Spice cars there in Stu Graham's hands, results in Graham coming to the pits. That gap between the leading Mazda and the second place Capri is closing. Equally, Andy Raz hasn't given up as Hodgett spins, goes off into the catch fencing and can't get out of the car because he's trapped by it. He's stuck in the mud as well. Spice now is making some impression. The track is drying slightly and as far as he's concerned, it's just what the doctor ordered. Under the Shell Super Oil Bridge, as in comes now one of the Rovers. A problem there with a flat front tyre. 
The gap now between the leading pair is closer and closer. Woodman cocks a wheel over the curb and gets within two cars length now. And down towards Stowe comes a gaggle of cars. In the middle of it, David De Costa spins and is just missed by another car there as he collects it together without taking any of the fence posts. Shall we give him a stick of rock? That's what he makes at home. Just let's see that again. De Costa, an absolutely phenomenal avoidance. Back now to the race, and that gap closing all the time as Woodman tries and tries to get closer to that Mazda. It's tantalising to have the 2.3-litre rotary car up there ahead, but not for much longer, because into the pits goes the rotary car when Percy's race is run. Now then, the lead is all Capri's, and there we see the teammate of Gordon Spice last year, Andy Rouse, about to make his bid. The drama isn't over yet. Rouse may have succeeded, Woodman's tucked in behind, but there's that threatening Capri coming up, and it's Gordon Spice. The dry tyre gamble is beginning to pay off. He's right on Woodman's tail. Can he catch the leader? It's third place at the moment, and he hurls the car out of the chicane. You can see that the track is still wet. There's still spray coming up, but Spice is into second place, and he's doing all he knows now to close on the leader. Lap after lap, that gap is closing. And now we come to the closing laps of the race as they come down towards Stoke Corner. And we can see that Rouse still now has a slight advantage, but it's being eked away. Up towards Woodcut and the Chicane once more. And they're still close together. Headlights ablaze towards slower cars. Out goes the checkered flag. Andy Rouse wins and a very sideways Gordon Spice manages second place. A superb drive. In contrast to the wide open spaces of Silverstone, we go now to the woodlands of Oldham Park for the third round of the championship. The weather also is a contrast. It's absolutely beautiful and Good Friday. This race is the first of two over the Easter weekend. Dogs are supposed to be banned from circuits, but I'm not quite sure whether that's Barry Williams or his dog. Barry always likes the rain. Perhaps he's trying to wet the track. Charles Sawyer Hall in the second of his Capri's. Andy Rouse drives the other one. Phil Martin Dye joins the Gordon Spice team and brings in a new commercial sponsor, British Airways, to the existing ones, the Autocar and Camasa Tools. Dye has had a long career in clubman's racing and hopes that saloons are going to take him to the top. Gordon looks happy, he should do. He's on the front row of the grid. Flanked on the one side by the fastest man in practice, the Mazda of Wyn Percy, and on his left by last year's teammate Andy Rouse. These two had some tremendous duels last year. Will it happen again? I think he's being rude to the cameraman at the moment. That certainly means he has to be relaxed. Gordon Spice racing cars are immaculately prepared as they wait at the start. The British Airways decal, new on the screen there, Camasa tools at the front and Valvoline, where the number plate usually is on the Capri, showing that due attention is paid to all the sponsors. Is this a newspaper battle? The Daily Mirror versus the Autocar? Only time will tell. All engines started and seconds tick away before the red light comes on and then the green. No one creeping at the moment, but excitement mounting in this very packed field. The race run in two parts, and this is all the big cars at the front there. The little ones have a race all of their own. Oton Park should suit the Mazda. The crowd have come to see a race, and they've come in their thousands. A late comer to the grid, and the seconds tick away. Moments now before the start, a little bit of creeping, and a tremendous start then by Andy Rouse, but it's of no avail, because on the inside, there's no doubt about it, the Mazda of Wyn Percy has staked its claim to the front and holds that lead now as they go round Old Hall for the first time. Somebody raises the dust but corrects it, and as they come up now at the end of lap one, it's Wynn Percy in the lead, Gordon Spice in second place, and in third place, Andy Rouse, then Vince Woodman. Percy is pulling away, and for a moment or two, Rouse is in front of the Capri of Gordon Spice, but Spice soon has him back again, and these two take part in one of the finest duels that we've ever seen at Oldham Park in a saloon car race. Their nose and tail sideways twitching left and right throughout the 25 laps. Past slower cars with gay abandon. No one wants to give an inch, but it's cleanly fought. It seems odd that these two should have been in the same team last year. The Rovers file through with Rex Greenslade leading Brian Muir. 
Phil Martin Dye, having a gentle race and playing himself in in his first saloon car drive goes through. But all eyes on this tremendous battle that we're having, and still it's Spice leading Rouse, almost having his tail tapped there by the 30-year-old Southam driver who is trying all he knows. Gordon Spice is probably the most experienced saloon car driver in the country. He started off with the Bright Act Minutes years ago and has gone from success to success ever since. A retirement there for Charles Sawyer Hall, who steps out of his sadly lost Capri, and we wait once again for this battle that's going on between second and third. Here's the leader, Wynne Percy. They're not very far behind him. Indeed, the gap seems to be closing a little at the moment. Onto the curve, off it, Rouse can do not a thing to get past the experienced Londoner. Phil Martin Dye goes out through Lodge Corner up towards Deasley. But we wait now for the leaders to come up towards us once more. And here's this battle still raging, just a couple of cars lengths between them. A suggestion of smoke there from the back of Rouse's car. He's closer and closer. Gordon Spice, however, keeps that road tied up there and there's absolutely no way by. Fourth man comes through. Vince Woodman there in number three, trying hard but not really on terms. Bill Martin Dye enjoying himself hugely. His first saloon drive and he's really proved a credit to the team. But all eyes still on this Capri battle. It's been dramatic, race long. And in the closing stages, it doesn't ease up one iota. The flag goes out. Win Percy wins, but behind him it's Gordon Spice. Gordon Spice has won the larger category, but not the race outright. He tells our commentator he's thinking of homologating a few bits and pieces to make it go a little bit quicker. But for all that, Gordon looks very happy, as well he might. The cars go now down to Thruxton in Hampshire. It's Easter Monday and the Piedo Ferries Formula 2 International. The second race then of the weekend, and once again a very full grid and a very fine day. Pole position, Gordon Spice with the Capri. But next to him, the two Woodman entered cars and it's Vince Woodman who leads away from the start with Jonathan Buncombe tucked in behind him. Spice was slow away and is engulfed by other cars as they go round now towards the complex. Into Campbell, Cobb and Seagrave, it's two Capris in the lead and the Mazda there squeezing past Spice. This is something of a traffic jam. There'll be some more of those this Easter Monday. Dave Morgan goes past the Metro there with the Colt and now at the end of lap one. It's definitely Vince Woodman in the lead and behind him Jonathan Buncombe and both of them pulling away a little bit from the Mazda win Percy. In fourth place, Gordon Spice and in fifth place, one of the Rovers at the moment. Sliding wildly there, Woodman on his own home ground. He's tried oh so hard to win a race here and it looks as if it might be right for him this time. A spin by Charles Sawyer Hall. Everybody misses him, he collects it back together again and continues with the race. Foot hard in, Sawyer Hoare joins the traffic. Morgan goes past him in the colt and he's a long way to make up. The leaders once more. They're closing up a little and Vince Woodman in the lead can no doubt see that he has three cars behind him. Coming up menacingly there, past a rover, in fifth place it's Andy Rouse. I wondered what had happened to him. In the lead, Vince Woodman. Behind him in second place, Jonathan Bunker. Then the Mazda of Wynne Percy. And then Gordon Spice, catching up ground. A rover comes through. In fact, a gaggle of them. But they're not having a good day at Thruxton. Andy Rouse fighting his way through the traffic, watched by Nick Whiting. And here come the leaders once again. First, second, third, and Spice still in fourth place. And still trying to catch up those yards that separate him from the leaders.